What's going on everyone, I'm Sir James from GamerFusion.com and today I'm here to give you my review for Takedown Red Supreme. Now Takedown Red Supreme is a tactical first person shooter swap based game where you do a few different objectives such as Mission, Tangled Hunt, and Bomb Disarm. As for the graphics, the overall graphics within the game are not too bad at all. You do have your average based graphics from what I've seen from the different levels that you're able to play. There's some nice detailing here and there, just nothing that high up there. So if you're expecting like outstanding graphics, this is not that type of game, but the game does have all right graphics where it does do the game justice and to where each of the levels feel like the different locations that you will be visiting within the game. As for the gameplay, the gameplay is very, very simple. Now in terms of the controls, the controls are like any first person shooter game, but the only difference here is that you have the ability to lean, which not all first person shooter games use the ability to lean, which I think most should. Um, in terms of the single player aspect, you do have three different game modes you're able to play. You have Mission, Tangled Hunt, and Bomb Disarmed. In Mission, you're going to be given objective to complete. You may have to rescue some hostages, eliminate the enemy hostiles within the area, gather some intel, or disable some bombs, or a mixture of all of the above into one map. And you do have a nice 60 minute in terms of span, in terms of how long you have to complete the game. So you do have a lot of time. So this is not the type of game where you just rush in and then rush out. It's pretty much one that's meant to take your time. You know clear the rooms room by room and all that fun stuff uh, you also have tangled hunt tangled hunt is basically like terrorist hunt if you played games that have terrorist hunt or you have a variety of uh, enemy ai within on the map and you pretty much have to eliminate every single target before they eliminate you and of course you also have bomb disarm which pretty much explains it right there you have to go and disable bombs simple as that you also have online multiplayer now in terms of the online multiplayer that's the issue i've been having with with the game because to me the single player aspect is all right but it's it's meant to be played with other players, especially the cooperative section and the missions and pretty much everything that I mentioned in the single player aspect. However, in terms of the multiplayer, not really many people are playing this game at all or either that maybe it's because it's just been released not that long ago and not that many people have grasped the concept of the game yet. Uh, another thing I noticed in terms of the online multiplayer is just a, a lot of bugs in general where you try to join games and it states that there's no one on there. Sometimes there is people, sometimes there isn't. And then at least with my experience, every time I did manage to join a multiplayer gameplay, no matter what mode it is or even the team deathmatch, the host always ends the game either around the beginning, the middle, or even towards the end, which is definitely a big issue and a big letdown. Now, there was one uh, where I was able to get in terms of a cooperative gameplay where me and a friend of mine were doing Tangled Hunt together, which was really enjoyable because it's definitely, you know, the mission Tangled Hunt and Bomb Disarm is definitely, you know, a really good mode to play with people that you know to get the best experience within the game. But if you don't know anyone, then you're not really going to have a good time. But like I said, in the multiplayer, you do have Mission, Tangled Hut, Bomb Disarm, and of course, a Team Deathmatch. The Team Deathmatch, uh, so far, like I said, in the multiplayer aspect, I haven't really been able to do much within that due to not really anyone has the game. But that's pretty much it in terms of the different game modes. Uh, one thing I did notice that was a big issue within the game uh, was that they stated for this to be the most realistic first-person shooter experience ever. However, I do have some issues with that. Now, I do like how the health system works because you die fairly easily within the game, but there's other moments where as soon as you take one footstep within the game, all the AI, pretty much the entire enemy within the facility, know exactly where you are. Now, sometimes we'll send a group of people after you or we'll just aim down the different doorways that you're going to be coming through. So pretty much they know where you're coming. Now, you do have the ability to, you know, uh, move around. You have the ability to sprint and, of course, crouch down. Of course, that will be a key in terms of the sounds that you'll be making. If you're moving in general, just walking, uh, you're going to be making a lot of footsteps. If you crouch down in terms of the sound that you make, it's going to be much more suppressed. Therefore, you're going to get the element of surprise. However, when it comes to the element of surprise, what I did notice, like to me, it feels like the enemy AI has... Um, aimbot or something like that because I, I could be entering a room i have the full element of surprise suppressors the enemy does not know i'm coming as soon as i make one you know move throughout that door the enemy automatically aims onto me and eliminates me which is uh not really a realistic experience in my opinion especially when there's no bombs there's, you know that's what i did notice too there's no like trip wires there's no bombs there's nothing that could basically give your position away unless if you're not using a silenced weapon or if you're just out in the open and in view of the enemy that's pretty much the only main way 
Um, but like I said, just a, a lot of issues with the AI, which pretty much I did notice that big time within the games, just a lot of bugs in general, especially on launch. Uh, this game has uh, quite a few, a few patches to go through before it's able to be fixed. Uh, but that's just one thing and note too in terms of the gameplay. As for the sound, the overall sound within the game is pretty much alright as well. I didn't really notice an in-game soundtrack which is uh, really unfortunate because it's mostly quiet half the time until you pop out and see an enemy or an enemy takes you out by surprise. Uh, one thing I did like is in terms of how the communication system works because the first thing I thought of when I heard you know the AI components talking you letting you know about enemy tangles the first thing that came into my mind was Rainbow Six for the Nintendo 64 which is great because I really did enjoy the sound from then but that's the exact sound that I thought of when I was hearing the you know the teammates talking to you of you know tangles located uh, enemy down and so forth so in terms of the sound department just overall it's okay nothing too fancy just basic as for the lifespan what kind of lifespan does this game have it really depends if you're just playing by yourself then this game is not really going to have that good of a lifespan just for you however if you do have access to multiplayer and people that you may know that want to play the game with you then the lifespan will be a bit better within that portion because the game is meant to be played with other players especially when you're doing the cooperative missions such as mission tangle hunt and bomb this arm the cooperative feature there is key and of course communication that's pretty much the best possible way in terms of an experience that you're going to get with this game but if you don't have access to online multiplayer or know anyone to play with or you're just playing on playing by yourself then you're not really going to have that enjoyable experience that you're hoping to get. As for the innovative, was there anything new here or was this something that we already seen before? This is something that we already seen before in games like SWAT or even some of the old Rainbow Six games. So pretty much nothing new here in terms of that concept. Now, like I said, they did state that this game was going to be the most realistic first person shooter game ever in terms of tactical shooters. However, uh, from the issues I've been seeing with the game, it really fails on that part and not giving us what the developers promised within the game. So so therefore, in the end, I'm going to give this game a 7 out of 10. It's an alright game. If you actually know people and if you have people to play with in terms of the online portion, then that's going to be the key factor within this game. If you're just getting it to play by yourself, then you're not going to have that enjoyable experience. Get it for the online portion. Get it to play cooperative. But just know in terms of the online portion, not that many people currently have it as of this review. More people may show within the next week or two. But anyways, if you guys want to see some gameplay, you guys could check the link down below. Anyways, I'm Sir James from Gamer Fusion, and remember, Gamer Fusion empowers your gaming.